Okay, welcome to this fourth, fourth video. Um, at the end of the last video, I realized that I'd, I'd forgotten to sort of zoom out and show everything that we had learned in those first three videos and show this whole ABC process. So I thought I'd leave this up at the start of this um, video that we're gonna do examples in, just so you can um, just so you can see everything we've covered so far in terms of this ABC process. In this in this video, what I wanted to do is, is do some examples though. Um, so let's let's start to um, get rid of some of these things we did in the previous videos. Just fade these out here. Okay, so um, in order to do these examples and 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 get the most out of them, I thought it'd be helpful for us to have it as sort of a bit of a cheat sheet on on hand of normal values and what the different components of the blood gas are and how we write them down. So I'll, I'll, I I did those before the video to save you the time and pain of watching me do all this. So just bring those up. Okay. So what we'll do here is is maybe start to look at some examples. Um, where is my pen? Here's my pen. Okay, so I've, I've drawn out this sort of cheat sheet list of normal values as it were I've got the normal values for the pH 7.35745 normal values for the CO2 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury and normal values for the bicarb 22 to 26 I've then put down what's an important thing to kind of important basic concept to grasp and what effect do those have on the pH? So from the respiratory component of the blood gas, which is our PCO2 um, increasing PCO2 leads to decreasing pH and acidosis. Decreasing PCO2 leads to an increasing pH, alkalosis. And then from our metabolic side of the blood gas, we're looking at the bicarbonate. And we, I've written that increasing bicarbonate increases the pH, which is an alkalosis. Decreasing the bicarbonate decreases the pH, which is an acidosis. Um, so that's going to be useful when we start getting to our examples. The next important thing to look at is really just the sort of convention that we use when we report arterial blood gases. You'll often see them written down in this way with just a slash in between each of the values. We very rarely write out pH and then a number, then PCO2 and then a number because it takes a while. So we typically report them with the pH first, followed by a slash, then the PCO2 slash, then the PaO2, which we haven't introduced yet. This is an oxygenation index, um, which we haven't even talked about yet in our blood gas videos. but. Uh, but we won't be looking at it in this video because it doesn't pertain too much to acid base. This is more of an oxygenation part of the blood gas. Then there's the bicarb, we recognize this one. Then we report the base excess and then we report the SAO2. This is the uh, saturation of um, arterial oxygen saturation. Um, again, this is an oxygenation index and uh, we won't be talking about it too much in terms of our strict um, acid base uh, interpretations. So really what we're gonna be looking at is this pH the PCO2 and the bicarb, right? So this is how we're going to be writing them down when we do our examples. pH followed by PCO2 followed by the bicarb. So an example of that would be 740-40-24. Okay, let's do an example. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to write out the blood gas um, and then like I have done here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say whether or not each value is normal or abnormal. And then we're going to try and create a sort of interpretation here. Okay, number one. So let's say our pH is 7.38, uh, our PCO2 is 38, and our bicarb is 23. So what may be useful for you guys to do is, is to pause the videos uh, here at this point, try and do the interpretation yourself, and then press play again and see if we've got it right. Um, Okay, so let's interpret this one. So 7.38, remember our ABC process. So A, B, C. So the first thing we're gonna do in A is determine the acid base status. How's this pH? So 7.38, that pH is normal, right? If we look at our normal value over here, 7.35 to 7.45. So this is, just maybe for this first one, I'll just label what these are. So that's our pH and it's within our normal range, okay? So our pH is, is normal. So let's change a different color and just write a little N there and maybe we'll circle it. So N for normal, okay? How about our PCO2? Maybe I'll just label these just for the first one. PCO2 and our bicarb. Um, so how's, how's that PCO2? So 38, uh, it's millimeters of mercury. Now that's within our normal range, right? 35 to 45. So 
uh, we have normal pH and we have a normal um, PCO2. Things are going well so far. And then this is our bicarbonate concentration. Now that's 23 and we see that our normal range is 22 to 26. So that's normal as well. Okay, so this would be uh, interpreted as just normal acid-base status, right? Normal acid-base. This is probably a similar blood gas that you would get if you or I had a blood gas done right now. Assuming you're not too nervous and changing your blood chemistry. Um, so yeah, so this is this is a normal blood gas, right? The pH normal, CO2 is normal, and bicarb is normal. That's great. So it's useful to see a normal one before we start looking at the abnormal ones. So what did we do here? We looked at uh, A, pH, um, our acid-base disturbance. We found that there was no acid-base disturbance. So considering that that there's two options now. This can either be that there is no acid-base disturbance and it's a normal blood gas, or it can be a blood gas which has been fully compensated. Remember how we talked about compensation in the last video? It might be that if we just looked at this 738 and said that's normal, moving on, ignore the rest of the gas, we, we could be missing that this might be, there might actually be a disturbance which has been fully compensated back to normal by the other parts. So then we have to move on. We look at the CO2, that's normal. So this is really when we start to see that there is no basic disturbance because the CO2 and the bicarb are both normal. So B is is ticked off, there's no basic disturbance. And C, there's not gonna be any compensation if there's no basic disturbance. Okay, let's do another one. So number two, let's say our pH is 7.20, our CO2, is 68 and our bicarb is 25. Okay, so let's start to look at this. Let's use our ABC process. Our A is we're gonna look at the acid base. The first thing we're gonna look at always is the pH. What's going on with the pH? In, in this case, 7.20, we'll look at our normal value and see that 7.20 is below uh, 7.35. So we know that our pH is, is, is low, okay? our pH is decreased. So we can say right off the bat now, we have an acidosis, okay? This, this pH is causing an acidosis. So let's just write that in here, okay? We have a low pH, which is an acidosis. It's less than the lower end of our normal range. So now what we go to, we, we figured out A, now we have to go to B and say, what's the basic disturbance? What's the primary disturbance causing that pH to be where it is? Okay, so then we look at the rest of the gas and we see here we are, our CO2, our PCO2 is 68. Now that's well above our normal range of, higher end of our normal range is 45. So we can say that the pH is elevated. Okay, now we go down and have a look. Well, what happens, sorry, our PCO2 is elevated, my mistake. Um, what happens if our PCO2 is elevated? We can look at the effect on the pH. An increased PCO2 we know causes a decrease in pH. So this is starting to make sense, right? These are jiving. These are these are these are sort of working together. We know that uh, this is elevated, and that should cause a decrease in pH. So we're starting to see that okay, this CO2 is up. That causes a decrease in pH. Yep, we've got that. So we're starting to get a bit of an idea of what's going on. So. Next thing to do is just to quickly look at the other component and see what's happening there. So our bicarb is 25, and we've seen that that's in normal range, right? There's the 22 to 26, so our bicarb is normal, okay? So we know that this is an acidosis and that this is of respiratory origin, okay? The respiratory component is what's causing this to be, um, causing the blood to be acidic. So this would be called a respiratory acidosis. Now, you notice that I made no reference to compensation. Um, we'll do those in a later video. What I wanna do for these videos is straight up get our respiratory acidosis, metabolic acidosis, and just get the basic uh, acid-base disturbance down first, and then we'll start looking at whether there's compensation. So we have an acidosis caused by the respiratory component, so it's a resp respiratory acidosis. Let's do a couple more. We can do them these a little bit quicker now. So, number three, 7.28, CO2, 37, bicarb, 17. Right, let's look at our pH. That's the A part, acid base. pH is, is below normal, right? The pH is acidic. Our pH is 7.28, that's below 7.35. So, we have an acidosis. 
Okay, now we just need to figure out what's causing the acidosis. How's our CO2? The CO2 is within normal range, right? 35 to 45. So our CO2 is normal, so that's not causing the acidosis. Now let's look at our bicarb. Our bicarb is below normal range, 22 to 26. Ours is 17. Let's look at what the metabolic component, the, the impact that has on the pH. We know that a low bicarb causes a low pH. This is to, and these make sense. These work. Um, these work well with each other. A low pH um, can be caused by a low bicarbonate. Okay, so in this case, we'd call this a metabolic acidosis, right? This is an acidosis uh, because of this, and it's metabolic because of this. Let's do the same for this one. We did it there. Acidosis because of the pH, and it's respiratory because of the CO2. All right, so metabolic acidosis. Acidosis caused by the metabolic component. And this would be uncompensated because there's no change in, in, in the uh, PCO2. But as I said, we'll get to those in a later video. Next one. Let's do one more and then um, we'll stop and do the rest in the next video. So 7.1, uh, 64, and 19. This is a little bit different, isn't it? So let's look at this. What's our first step? Look at the acid base component. Look at the pH. The pH is low, right? This is below our normal range. Okay, 735, 745. So we have an acidosis. Okay, now let's see if we can find the cause of that acidosis. So 64 for our CO2, that's pretty elevated, right? That's up. So an increased CO2 causes a decrease in pH. We have an increased CO2 and decreased pH. So do we just go right ahead now and say this is a respiratory acidosis? Let's do that. Should we say respiratory acidosis? Okay, but now we've forgotten to look at our bicarb. So our bicarb is below normal range. Okay, so this is low. And an, a low bicarb also causes a low pH. So in this situation, both the respiratory component and the metabolic component are acting together to cause this low pH. Okay, so this would not be a respiratory acidosis. This would be what we call a combined, a combined or sometimes called a mixed acidosis. Okay, so we have an acidosis and the cause of that acidosis we found to be both the respiratory component and the metabolic component. They can both act to change this pH, okay? So we've had a look at a little bit of acidosis. In the next video, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can delve into some more examples and and get really good at these.